Hello, welcome to Oceanic Oracle. My name is Ari and today I'm going to be going through my December book haul. So the stuff that I'm going through today is stuff that I got for Christmas. Also, I think I have one book purchase in here that I got myself, but I'm just including it in here. I'm also going to be including one other Christmas gift that I was given from my father, which was very nice of him. The article that I want to talk about is my new Kindle. I'm so excited. My dad got me a Kindle Oasis because if you've been around my channel in October, my beloved Kindle Fire, which I'd had since 2013, finally bit the dust. And I have, I've now got a new Amazon Kindle and I absolutely love it. It feels so good. I've read a few books already on my Kindle and it just, it makes me happy. There's a font on here that I didn't actually know about because my Kindle was so old. There's a font for dyslexics on here and it actually makes my reading experience so much faster and so much easier for me to like actually read. It's, oh, I'm just, I'm so happy and I'm so happy that I got it. So thank you, dad, if you're watching. I really, really appreciate my Kindle. Thank you. Now we should actually get on to the massive stack. So this, as I've said, is stuff that I got for Christmas. There's one book in here that I actually got for myself, or technically, technically there are three books in here that I got for myself, but I gave them to me from my cats because I'm an adult and I can do that. And in my house, we always get gifts from pets. Let's start with the first book on here, which is one that I'm actually currently reading. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I have been wanting to pick this up for ages. This book has been like on my radar for a while. It's sort of a, a magical realism, historical fiction. So there's magic in here and it's about this circus that only appears at night. It's called the Circus of Dreams. It's called the Circus of Dreams in French, but I'm not gonna butcher the pronunciation because I cannot speak French. I've just started, I'm not very far through it and I'm loving it so far. The writing is absolutely beautiful. I think there's also an enemies to lovers romance in here from what I'm getting already. It's told very whimsically and I absolutely love it. I'm in the mood for this sort of thing. This is the first book. I just love it and I can't wait to see what I think of it at the end because I'm just excited. Hopefully I'll be able to finish this today and tomorrow but we will see. That's book number one. We got started with sort of magical realism and the next book that I was given was from, um, again, it's from my family in the UK. And if you can't tell, I'm a big Greek mythology nerd. So the next two books are sort of like, were given to me as one gift. But the book I'm gonna talk about first is Sappho's Stung With Love, Poems and Fragments. Sappho is a pretty famous Greek poet. I haven't read any of their stuff. Um, but I'm looking forward to picking this up. This has been forwarded. There's a preface by Cal and Duffy in here. I'm just super stoked about this. One of the things I need to do is actually read more poetry. So this is a good way for me to do that. I'm intrigued. So I haven't actually read any of Sappho's works in my courses that I did in my classics course at university. So I'm looking forward to reading this and seeing what I think. I'm so excited. I'm so glad I actually have an opportunity to look at this. So that's the first bit of Greek myth that I got. The next one is Sophocles's Philocrates. This one's a play as opposed to poetry, as you can see. So it's about a soldier that gets abandoned on the way or on the Greek's journey to Troy. It's about what happens to him. I'm intrigued. I can't wait. Hopefully, hopefully this lives up to my expectations. I've got, a, I was, I've been given a wonderful bookmark as well. And I'm just, I'm so excited. I read quite a lot of like Greek tragedy last year. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I think of this. And I can't wait. Like, these are just two great books that I'm like, I'm so excited. I wasn't expecting to get them, but I love them. So I'm very excited. The next book that I was given was a gift from my cousin. And this is Kazuo Ishiguro's uh, a Pale View of Hills. This is uh, Kazo Ishiguro's first book, I, I believe, which is really, really cool um, because I have his Clara and the Sun down here. You're not going to be able to see it, but I have Clara and the Sun. So I actually have his first book as well as his latest one. And I'm so excited to read it. I cannot wait. I have a feeling I'm going to like this. It's about a woman who's like trying to come to terms with the fact that her her daughter has committed suicide and um, the woman lives in England 
which sort of models of um of the author's life because he's grown up oh, i think he lives in england i don't know how long he's lived in england and this sort of mirrors it uh the woman retreats in on herself trying to figure out what went on in the past and what led up to her daughter's death i'm assuming it's going to be really heartfelt and emotional and i'm just i'm prepared to cry and be emotional reading this but i'm looking forward to it and i'm just i'm so excited so the next one will be no surprise if you watched my channel and you saw my reaction to this book when I was actually reading it and also I talked about it in one of my vlogs in December and that is The Love Hypothesis. Yes I got this myself. I was given this from one of my lovely cats, actually the cat that is sitting on my bed at the moment. I love this book when I read it on Kindle and I actually want to go and annotate because the way I show my love for books is by annotating and I feel like I want to go back and reread and read through the eye of the annotation lens. The reading experience is a bit changed when you're going through and annotating because you're not just you're not focusing on the overall enjoyment you're actually trying to analyze what you're feeling at least the way that I annotate does so I I can't wait I am looking forward to picking this up. Ali Hazelwood is one of my like was one of my favourite authors that came out of 2021 so I'm looking forward to reading what she actually releases next year as well because I'm just so excited. But yeah I picked up a copy of The Love Hypothesis to annotate so there we go. Uh, that was a gift from a cat. The next book is also something I got from my cousin and it is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is about the I think it's about the Korean community that lives in Japan uh, when Korea has been colonised by the Japanese. Hong Kong was actually occupied by the Japanese as well during World War Two. I'm interested to read like to read this sort of thing. I like my mum has read this and she said she really liked it and from what I've heard it's it's a really good story. If you've been to Japan um, I don't know if you've heard of like pachinko like they're sort of pachinko bars they're sort of like gambling dens uh, but they're like they're not technically gambling because the prizes you get are like food or like not monetary you know you know what i mean um this is about a girl who falls for a yakuza member uh if you know about asian gangs that yakuza are sort of like the triads for hong kong or like the mob i guess for the states is it mobsters is that what they're called yeah, so it's about this girl. She grows up in Korea. She falls for a wealthy Yakuza guy, like a Yakuza member. And when she discovers that she's actually pregnant, when she discovers that he's married. She refuses to be bought because she's facing ruin. She goes out and accepts an offer of marriage from a, a gentle minister passing through on his way to Japan, where she ends up alone and in a new country with only one person she can follow. I'm interested to see what this does with it. I'm interested in this sort of history. I'm looking forward to reading this and I can't wait. Lots of people I know really really enjoyed this book so hopefully I will be too and it just sounds really interesting and I'm excited to read more sort of East Asian historical fiction. The next book that I have in my stack is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a book that's like, can, you, can we appreciate how floppy that is? Like, I love floppy books. If you know me, like, I just love when a book can just like sit open like that and don't have to worry about the spine or anything. But yeah, so this is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a Russian folklore retelling. It's about a village in northern Russia, I believe. And it's about life before Christianity was brought into like Russian society. It's about a village's belief in wood spirits and our main character in this book can actually see them. But once Christianity enters Russia and reaches all the way to their little village, uh, the villagers stop paying their respects to the woodland spirits and they become angry so bad things start to happen. I think there's famine, disease, all because the villagers have stopped um, worshipping the local woodland spirits. So it's this, it becomes this girl's mission to go and appease them, I believe. It's just about her dealing with this new sort of outlook and seeing these people that used to worship these spirits that she knows are there not do that anymore and a change in society. 
I'm looking forward to reading this. I think this is sort of like magical realism, again, set historical period. I'm excited to get to this. I am in the mood for like wintry fantasy, so I'm, I can't wait. This next book is from one of my sisters and it is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I have now read two books by Tessa Bailey. I read Fix Her Up and I've also read Window Shopping. I enjoyed both of them so I'm looking forward to seeing what Tessa Bailey does with this. This book follows Piper who you can see on the cover. She's a wealthy daughter like she's she's fashionable and she's an influencer or something. After she gets caught um, after drinking too much champagne and uh, throwing a rager of a roof party um, she ends up in like in the slammer and her fa her stepfather sends her to a village in Washington to sort of straighten her out. So this is the book about her going to this village and or her going to this like town. It's about her journey of like her growth you know to be like a like not a wild child let's just say that. When she goes to this town she bumps into this guy um, he's a local fisherman and he doesn't believe that uh, the wild child can change her ways so she takes on and takes it as a challenge to try and conquer this and show her stepfather and this guy that she can grow and she can change and she can grow up. I'm looking forward to this this is a hate to love story I think and oh, again another floppy book um, I'm just excited I can't wait hopefully hopefully this is good because I put the next book in this series on the um on my anticipated releases for this year so there we go that's it happened one summer I can't wait to pick it up I have a lot of romance on here so the next book that I got is another gift from one of my favourite cats and that is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is the third and final book in the Kiss Quotient trilogy I guess. I've read The Kiss Quotient a number of times. I read this in April at the beginning of 2021 and I absolutely love this book. I want to go back and reread it again at some point. I just I love this book so much and this is the latest release in the trilogy so it's the last one. Uh, this follows Anna and Anna is in, uh, she's in a relationship with this guy and this guy asks if they can have an open relationship. So her boyfriend asks for them to be in an open relationship and she goes, right, okay, so I'm going to go around and sleep with as many guys as possible. Uh, she bumps into one of the characters we meet in the original Kiss Quotient, like book and in the bride test which is the second one she meets Quan. so anna is also a youtube influencer so there's that aspect of the book as well she's sort of sick of it so she meets Quan as one of her her first real one night stand or at least they think it's going to be a one night stand and then it get, turns into two three multiple meetings and she realizes that there's more to him than just sex and maybe she should actually like move out of her toxic her other toxic relationship. I want to see Quan be happy because he's like one of the real, he's one of the real ones. Like he's there for, to sort both people, like both of the male characters in the series. He's there to like talk to them. So hopefully this makes him happy. I'm looking forward to reading it. Hopefully I like it as much as the others. I've heard stuff from other people that they'd ha they didn't like this as much as they like the other books, but I have hope. Hopefully this is a good one. So I, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Helen Huang does. This next book is a gift to myself and this is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I absolutely love Casey McQuiston's writing. I love Red, White and Royal Blue. I, I just love that book. I know they released this book earlier this year and I, I saw it in a bookshop and I decided to get it. I don't think I've really read much sapphic fiction so I'm looking forward to seeing what this is like. Hopefully I like the writing. This is a this is a book that follows August, this girl here. She walks past this train I think every day and she starts noticing this girl on the train, the Q train, and she starts to have a crush on her. And then she comes to realise that this girl on the train has been stuck in a time loop and is actually from the 1970s. So it just seems really interesting. I love like time loop sort of things. I think I find it fascinating and I absolutely love sort of like plays on time. I think plays on time are really good when they're done correctly because you can't write rules in that can like alter the fabric of time but I think if you have people who can sort of like weave in and out I just 
I just find it fascinating. So I'm interested to see what Casey McQuiston does. I am looking forward to reading this. Hopefully I like it. I loved Red, White and Royal Blue and hopefully I like One Last Stop as well. The next book that I have in my stack is uh, Pride, Prejudice and Other Flavours. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. I mean, as you can see, my lovely edition of Pride and Prejudice is up there. But this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. This is a gender reversed Pride and Prejudice retelling set in the US and it follows Indian families. Our Darcy in this case is the woman called, is the girl called Trisha Raje. And she is San Francisco's most acclaimed neurosurgeon, but it's not enough. They want, they want her, they want the family to be really influential. So when it comes to rules, she's not allowed to trust an outsider. She can never do anything that can jeopardize her brother's potential for political aspiration. And she can never ever defy her family. Um, but she, Trisha is guilty of breaking all of those rules, but now she has a chance to redeem herself so long as she doesn't repeat her past mistakes. Enter our Elizabeth in this situation, DJ Kane, who has known people like Trisha before, who judge him by his rough beginnings and who place pedigree above character. I mean, could we get any more like Lizzie and Darcy? I'm excited. Hopefully I like this book because there are more books in this series and this author has actually written a persuasion retelling. If I like the writing in this, then I will go and pick that up because I am a sucker for persuasion. I think I just find persuasion really, really heartwarming. If it's one of the Jane Austens you haven't read, you should definitely pick it up. It's like one of the original second chance romances. That's enough of me talking about persuasion. I'm looking forward to reading this. Hopefully I love it. I'm stoked to see what a Pride and Prejudice retelling is like. I have read a few sort of things based off Pride and Prejudice, which can feel a bit fan fiction-y. Not that fan fiction is bad. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this feels like and I can't wait. On to the last three. I'll start off with this, The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. It's also illustrated. This is a collection of myths relating to the Grishaverse. Uh, if you've been living under a rock or you haven't seen my Grishaverse vlog, um, I've been going through the Grishaverse and I've just been reading through it. I asked my sisters for this as a present this year and they delivered. So this is, this is a book that contains lots of different myths from around the countries in the Grishaverse. And there's wonderful illustrations as well along the sides. So there's also artwork interspersed throughout the book. I'm really interested in reading this. I can't wait because I want to build up my Grishaverse lore and knowledge. I'm just really excited. Like, I just, I really enjoy the Grishaverse. So there we go. That is, it's like a like a companion piece. You know, the sort of things that like the Demigod Diaries are for the Percy Jackson series, which you can see up there. Anyway, moving on. The second to last book I have on here is Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is by Stephanie Garber or Garber. I haven't read any of Stephanie Garber's books before. I know she wrote the Caraval series. So if you've read that, this um, Stephanie wrote these as well. This, it, this book follows a girl called Evangeline Fox and she believes, she's always believed in happily ever afters. But one day she discovers that her true love or like her beloved has been engaged to, has gotten engaged to another woman. And she goes to, what's his name? The Prince of Hearts. Yeah, she goes to the Wicked Prince of Hearts to try and stop this marriage so she can marry her true love in the end. In return for what he does for her, he asks for three kisses. As soon as she kisses him the first time, she, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game. I'm looking forward to reading this. Hopefully I like it. I think this sounds sort of like younger YA, which honestly, like sometimes I'm in the mood for. I I think I'm going to try and get to this before like the spring when it's like sort of wintry because that, that's just what I feel like certain certain fantasies give me like winter fantasies feelings and that's what I feel like with this book so there we go that is going on my list hopefully I'll be able to read it in like February February is when it gets a bit cold here and last but definitely not least I have six crimson cranes by Elizabeth Lim let's just appreciate how beautiful the UK cover is. Like I like the US cover, but like 
DC all the pastels I really really like pastel colors and this is just like this is one of the most beautiful books that I own now and it's just stunning and I absolutely love it it's just so pretty this is a uh, retelling of a Hans Christian Andersen story I think it's called the wild swans it's a fairy tale retelling it's inspired by Japanese like mythology it's stunning it looks beautiful this follows Shiori yeah Shiori Amna who is the only princess in Kyata and she has a secret she has the ability to use forbidden magic and it crops up on her wedding day the wedding day that she doesn't actually want but then she discovers that her wicked stepmother actually is able to use the same sort of forbidden magic as well and curses Shiori and turns all the six of her brothers into cranes if Shiori opens her mouth to talk one of her brothers dies this is just really fascinating i am looking forward to picking this up it's just so beautiful it's stunning and i'm so happy that it's in my life the sequel in this duology is on my anticipated release for this for 2022 so hopefully hopefully i like this one and i'll go out and pick up the next book in the series like it's just so stunning give me more asian inspired fantasies because i mean i've grown up here so um, I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see what this is like. I'm so so excited. Those are all the books that I hauled in December and I know it's a lot but I'm happy with it. I'm so lucky that these were given to me. I'm going to have quite a few books to go through for a while and it's so exciting for me. I, it just makes me so happy. I want to say thank you to my family because they've sent me quite a lot. This was my first Christmas without them so it made me feel really really loved to receive these books and the messages that they sent with them so thank you so much you know exactly who you are so thanks if you like this video please leave a like and subscribe if you want more bookish content my social media links are down in the description i hope you have a wonderful day or night depending on when you're watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye guys